from Tamworth Regional Gallery here today with you for another school holiday workshop. Today we're going to make this cool printmaking and collage cityscape. You can see it's a nightscape with lots of stars. You might even be able to see the moon and some planets there or it might be space junk, I'm not sure. If you're looking for inspiration before we begin this workshop, you might like to look up some famous artworks of other night states. Maybe Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, or there are some beautiful Australian artists who have created nightscapes as well. So be sure to have a look on Google Image Search for some of those images. So what you'll need for this workshop today is you'll need two small pieces of paper, one large piece of paper, some blue paint, a little bit of black paint, and some white paint. You'll need some old plates to pop those colours onto, and paint brushes, some oil pastels or crayons in yellow, grey and black. If you don't have those, you can use chalk pastels or chalk as well. You'll just get a different effect. You'll need a pair of scissors Remembering that if you have a little bit of difficulty with scissors or you need some help with that, you can get a grown up or someone else to help you at home. A glue stick, some Lego or building blocks. This is a kind of Duplo, I guess. Doesn't matter what size or shape they are. They'll get paint on them, but you'll be able to wash that off later. You'll need some foil. So get a grown up to help you with that bit. You might need to get some out of the kitchen with them. And of course there's a sharp edge here, so you need to be super careful when you're getting that out. You'll need an old cup or a disposable cup with some water in it and some newspaper to cover your space. All right, let's get started. So the first part of our printmaking landscape artwork that we need to create are the buildings. And to do that, we'll use our Lego, building blocks or Duplo, whatever you have lying around at home. Paintbrush, our paint, and our small pieces of paper. I also usually have a little bit of paper towel or um, an old rag lying nearby, just in case I need to wipe my hands. If you have a paint shirt that you'd like to put on, now's probably a good time to do that too. So first we'll mix our black and white paint to make some gray. Remember, we don't need very much black to make a nice grey colour. This is grey for the buildings. You can see that I'm spreading that paint out and that's because we're going to use that paint surface to stamp into using it with our blocks. So, as you can see, I'm stamping until I have a nice even coverage on the bottom of the block. And then all I do is press that down onto my piece of paper. That's it. Do it with all the different types of shapes that you've got. Because of course we all need tall buildings, shorter buildings, wide buildings, and narrower buildings. You could be creative and turn some of these taller buildings into apartment blocks by adding different floors or levels. There's no right or wrong way to do this. So whatever you like, it's up to you. When you've done that, use a smaller block with these circle patterns on them. Dip that in. And we're going to start creating some window shapes or lights in the windows. Are you happy with that one? Move on to the second piece. Now, if you have a wide piece of Lego or building block and you can't stamp it all in there, you can use your paintbrush just to dab it along the outside edge. Do 
Remember, as always with art, it doesn't matter if it's not perfect. Everybody's will look slightly different. That's fine. Actually, it's amazing. It's what art is all about. So I'm adding some different shapes inside my buildings. You might choose to use some of these shapes as well to see what kind of patterns you can create inside buildings. So you might overlap them or cross them over. When you finish stamping all of your blocks and you've got two pages full of those beautiful building shapes, we'll set them aside to dry. And now for our night sky. You'll need your large piece of paper, your blue paint and a new paintbrush, and you'll need your yellow or white oil pastel or crayon. First we're going to create some stars. You may choose to do stars like this or you might just like to do some dots. Either is fine. You could do a combination of both. If you think of other things that might be in the night sky as well, of course you'll have a moon. You might place the moon up the top or you might put it over in a corner. I'm not sure. It's up to you wherever you choose to put it. Of course, stars are often in little clusters called constellations. You might like to have a look out at the constellations tonight. I'm nearly finished with my stars. Another little cluster here, one here. just include my moon. I'm just doing a small moon up in the corner here. And the next part that we're going to do, we'll definitely need to be careful because we're using paint again. Um, and it can be a little bit unpredictable this part. So we're going to create a kind of wash. And a wash is a thin layer of paint that's quite watery and it goes all the way over the top of our stars and moon. Now we're trying to create a really even layer or as even as we can make it. So try to do long, even strokes and this is quite quick. So you'll need some water in your paint if it's not really watery water paint and a big wide brush. If you don't have a wide brush, you could use a sponge. That would also work really beautifully. All right, let's begin. Now, if you've used a crayon or an oil pastel, you'll see that your stars will start peeking through now. As you get lower in the artwork, you'll notice that I'm dipping my brush less into the water and paint. That's to create a streakier look, like this. Because of course the light from the buildings will be coming up and making the sky less dark. If you choose not to do that, that's great too, it's up to you. All right. Paint aside, be washed up afterwards. And here you'll see my night sky. Alrighty, now that part needs to dry, so let's get our buildings cut out. Our building should almost be dry now. Clean up our workspace. And here are our buildings. You'll see that they've dried a little bit darker than we painted them. And so that's why it's important not to put too much black in your artwork to start with in the paint. And there's my first building.
Now we're cutting around the outside of our Lego stamps, just to make sure that we don't cut off the outside of the building. So we're cutting on the outside line, as you can see. If you need help with scissors, I'm sure a grown up or someone at home might be able to help you with this part. Of course, remember scissor safety, we always cut away from ourselves when we're cutting the scissors. We keep our other hand well out of the way. So, once you've finished cutting out all of your buildings, it's time now to assemble our collage. We have our background almost dried and our buildings as well. Now we're going to place our buildings on top of our background, but first we might add a little bit of detail to these. They're looking very much like buildings already, but of course they may need some lights in the window and for that we'll use our yellow oil pastel or they might need a little bit of filling in with some grey. I have a grey pastel here. You can use the side of that oil pastel and that fills in, just makes a nice little bit of texture over the top of your printmaking. So you can start hand colouring your printmaking pieces. I'm just adding some, I guess they're like little scribbles on mine, just to make it look a little bit more like cement. So we can fill in the side of the buildings with lots of different types of scribbles or patterns just to make them visually a little bit more interesting. And then of course we can add some lights in the window. Don't worry too much about colouring them in perfectly. You don't need to worry about that too much. They look quite effective if they're just done sort of freehand. If you like to at this stage, you could also get your Lego or building blocks that you had before and place them underneath your buildings and do a sort of rubbing on top of the building to see what kind of texture you might get. And that can create an interesting effect as well. So do that now for all of your buildings. Now that we've finished all of our buildings, it's time to assemble. It's a good idea to lay out your buildings before you stick them down, just to get an idea of where you'd like to curate or place all of your buildings. Remember, it's okay if they overlap. Once you're happy with how your buildings look, it's time to stick them down. Grab your glue stick and start gluing. Make sure the little corners are stuck down. Put your lid on your glue so it doesn't dry out. Oh, I found a little rogue one. I better add it on. And there we have it, our printmaking cityscape. Now there's one last thing that we might need to add. You might have noticed that some of your buildings need a little bit more detail. So grab a black or maybe a gray or a yellow pastel and add the bits that you'd like to add. Almost there. Now, if you've got some foil at home, you might like to add some nice bright stars in the sky. I have some foil here, so I'll show you how. Get a grown up to help you pull the foil because of course there is a sharp edge in there.
making sure that you don't spike yourself with any of these parts. Take small amounts of foil and scrunch them into balls. These look pretty cool. They could be really bright stars or they might even be meteors. Can you think of anything else that they might be? UFOs maybe? Space junk? So glue those ones down now too. And there we have it. Our very own print making, do it yourself at home, nightscape. The city. I hope you've enjoyed this art workshop with me, Kate, from Tamworth Regional Gallery today. Please be sure to check out our other workshops online and the other school holiday resources that are available through Tamworth Regional Council. Cheerio!